morning, fellow learners. Uh, this is SBS 200, uh, Introduction to Social Sciences, an income A class. And my name is Juan Jose Gutierrez, your instructor for the semester. This is our first uh, online session, so we'll see how it works. Uh, for today, I'm going to continue. I'm going to retake that introduction that we started um, a few a few days ago on uh, what is social theory, uh, which corresponds to the first unit of, of our course. All right, let's get on with it. When, uh, when I first uh, started presenting this uh, issue, we talked about how the idea of the social is not something that is new in and of itself, because uh, for millennia, humans have talked and understood um, and understood that there are different fields of human interaction, namely the military field, the religious field, and the administrative field, each of which has its own internal logic, and uh, there's been a lot of reflection about it. So um, what's so new about social sciences? And um, what's new about the social sciences is that uh, humans eventually specialized that uh, understanding and reflection on those fields uh, into something that was solely around uh, the social as a phenomenon, but as I mentioned before, based on two fundamental issues. One is that this knowledge was going to be based on, on empirical facts, that is, facts that we can appreciate through our senses. That's the, what the word empirical means, comes from the senses. And um, secondly, that it, that it would be a, a knowledge that was systematically arranged and contested, checked. And, um, and in doing so, this idea of the social would no longer be a matter of opinion or sentiment, but it will become uh, what we know today as uh, social science. Science in the sense that you have a method and you have a theoretical body of ideas that will help you explain Phenomena of the past and phenomena of, um, of uh, present and future. These uh, new fields uh, were born in universities, mostly European universities in the 19th century. And also I mentioned that it was important for social scientists to create a field that would be funded and respected and not, not only that, but also cherished as something of importance, as something necessary. Uh, so those uh, thinkers move from being just philosophers, which is what they were in the past. I uh, think, for example, Aristotle or Plato or Socrates, Greek philosophers, uh, they, they already talked about uh, society. But uh, differently uh, from them, philosophers in the 19th century started to solely um, spend their time in terms of thinking and working around issues of the social. Um, well, the first, uh, one of the first founders of sociology as we know it today was uh, Auguste Comte, a French uh, sociologist, uh, who was interested in a knowledge that was positive in the sense that we can check it, that we can confirm it. And that's a positivistic methodology or a theory. And he's the founder of that. Uh, most people would consider Auguste Comte as the first um, sociologist in earnest. Um, other than, um, than Comte, there, there's a number of uh, French and German and, and European uh, initial sociologists that uh, you should be aware of. Uh, another one that it's um, of critical importance would be uh, Emil Durkheim, which is the one that we see in this image. And he had it very clear, as, as the slide projects, that the challenge was to create the concepts and ideas that would enable for such a science. So there was an aspiration in the sense that there was a need, but there was nothing uh, in terms of um, scaffolding that needed to be created for that. So the first thing he needed to figure out was uh, what is it that we're actually studying? Uh, biologists would study uh, living organisms. Physicists would study the mechanics of the physical life. So it was clear the objective, just like chemistry is the, the chemical composition of things. So what is the subject matter of social sciences? And the subject matter of social sciences 
it was uh, not just the, so the society as a general concept, but the social facts. Once you identify social facts according to um, Durkheim, then you can move on to uh, uh, establishing solid basis for the creation of sociology as a disciplinary field. So Comte, on the first hand, with a positivistic approach, and then Durkheim, which was the one that uh, I was presenting um, the idea of a social fact at the core of what uh, sociology should be uh, concerned and interested in. Of course, all of these ideas, very much so like Darwin's ideas have been um, revised and, and uh, challenged and, and uh, reorganized, uh, we will see eventually how social facts have become problematic. But suffice to say for now that uh, those were the foundations, the initial foundations for sociological knowledge and for any other social science, science for that matter. All right, so uh, let's go over it once, once more uh, and uh, explore the definition of theory. So theory, as we say, as we I already talked about in the classroom, theory is not just um, a uh, sort of a, a guess and knowledge. In theory, I was supposed to be here in time. In theory, I was supposed to uh, to do this recording uh, marvelously well. well. That was the theory, what's, it, what's the fact? Well, that's sort of the colloquial use of of, uh, of theory. Reality, when we talk about theory in the social sciences, we talked about a body of hypotheses that are there to be tested in questions and tested by repeated uh, uh, trial of them. And once once we get there, then we can uh, uh, we can have a solid body of, uh, of knowledge. We have a solid body of knowledge in criminal in, uh, criminal studies, criminalistic studies. We have a s solid body of theory in anthropology, in sociology, in political science. And all of that is um, what we use to advance our knowledge and understanding of the social. Um, scientific theory therefore summarizes a hypothesis or a group of hypotheses that have been supported with repeated testing. When you have enough evidence that supports those hypotheses, then we move that one into what we know as a theory, that is, an established scientific truth, truth to understand a social, in this case, phenomenon. Let's keep moving on. Uh, social science then has different elements and components that we need to be uh, aware of and part of what you're going to be learning this semester or rehashing this semester. One is just to know its origins. So we talked about a couple of sociologists, but just plenty more. And remember, we're mostly started starting with the Western uh, uh, traditions, but there are many other traditions out there that are important to know and explore. But we're, ba we're basically working off of the Western one. Um, there are more components in social science that I tried to explain the other day as well. When, when you study a physical object, then it doesn't matter what, what are your emotions towards the physical object or what are the emotions of the physical object towards you. It has no effect on, on the study. But when, when you study humans, your positionality, your emotions, how you're taken, how people react to each other, that, that has a major impact on it. Um, there also, uh, it's, it's also important to remember that there's a moral component in that uh, when we study physics is because we want to understand the world and be able to navigate through the world more su successfully. When we study society, we, we would like to see society to grow stronger and healthier. And so there's a moral component in, that explains our interest in society. It's inevitable. So there's nothing wrong with that, but it is important to take into consideration that there are motives that go beyond just the mere exercise of the creation of knowledge that, that are of moral or, or ethical um, nature that had to do with and that explains social sciences. And it's something we need to continue exploring and, and understanding what is the impact of the, of the moral dimension of any social scientific study. There are different branches. We, uh, we saw uh, a video clip uh, that explains a few of the social sciences and how these um, relate to each other. And I'm actually posting this um, press presentation so that you can revisit that clip if you liked it, because I, I know some of you actually mentioned liking it. 
uh, we should also explore in specific what's been the trajectory of social sciences in the United States and then what is the role of, um, of the social scientific knowledge in the 21st century. So I'm skipping the, the presentation, uh, the little clip for, for now, but it's going to be posted. Let's just go over some of the basic definitions of social sciences. Anthropology is, uh, is, in a nutshell, the study of the origin, the behavior, and the physical, social, and cultural development of humans. This is a huge definition. So anthropology is basically the study of uh, the human experience. But uh, perhaps what's characteristic of anthropology is that it mostly and or it specifically focuses on the um, of the nature of the cultural component or dimension of social life. Then we have uh, cultural geography, which is the study of how humans uh, use the space as a field of interaction. Economics is the study of the creation, consumption, and distribution of scarce resources. It's a field that is uh, broadly uh, organized into two subfields, the microeconomic field and the macroeconomic. The macroeconomic being the one that studies large economic structures, uh, systems and, and, um, and national economies. And macroeconomics is the one that studies uh, our everyday economic life. Uh, macroeconomics emphasizes national scale economies and their interactions, and macroeconomics tend to focus on interaction between agencies, corporations, and individuals. So mostly it's sort of everyday life uh, uh, elements. Political science. Political science, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a social scientific discipline that explores the relationship between the uh, political realm and the economy and see them both as deeply intrinsically connected. So if you want to understand why you have one president now or another president, um, political economists will tell you, well, let's look at the economy and see how the economy is driven by and drives uh, the, uh, pol the political life. Another fundamental uh, branch of uh, social behavioral science is psychology, which is the study of the of the mind or the science of the mind and in social psychology see us not just as individuals with an inner life but how those inner lives interact with each other and how that interaction explains uh, uh, social and individual behavior so it's a related field of social psychology that explores the mind's operations in the context of interactions within a group uh, then we have uh, sociology which is um, often seen as the, uh, sort of the core of social science, um, sort of that integrates uh, knowledge from all other disciplines. Um, so there'll be some of the branches of, of social science. This uh, course also explores and introduces to you what is a method. Um, Method is, uh, the word means the road that you take to get to somewhere. So in this particular case will be, what are the, the steps that we follow to generate knowledge that is of scientific nature? That is the methodology. Meta, meta which in Greek means um, the end or, or the goal, the aim. And odos, like odometer, means road. So the road to the end, that's methodology. Uh, so what, what are the strategies that we follow to gather information and to analyze information? Science cannot be understood without uh, considering the methods, hypotheses, and research objectives. Okay, let's now talk about empirical evidence. So empirical evidence, as I said, is uh, information that is acquired by observation or experimentation, that is, uh, information that we acquire using our senses and, and tools and, and methodologies and strategies and, and techniques that are based upon our senses. Just to give you um, a few examples of, um, of how empirical evidence is gathered in, um, in most social sciences, you will rely on observations, 
uh, you will rely on interviewing and you will rely on a, a number of different methodologies related to gathering information using the, the census. We will talk further about those methods. Okay, so if, um, if we are interested in something in social sciences, this is in going beyond um, our own bias we're entitled to, but, but bias opinion, that doesn't cut it for social science. We're looking for uh, a fact-based understanding of how we function in society. And we're looking for uh, certain recurring um, events that we can expect with certainty. And that is called a scientific law. In social um, sciences, um, our scientific laws are difficult to attain because I would think because of the complexity of the human experience. So as I'm saying here, like in natural sciences, laws in social sciences are more about expectation than approximation. So in uh, natural sciences, we know what happens if we release an object. It will fall as long as that object is within the confines of a gravitational force, say the planet Earth. In social sciences, we will say, I'm expecting that the crowd will behave in this way, but it doesn't mean that every time the crowd will, will behave in that way because of the myriad of factors that are always in, uh, involved in the production of social uh, events. So we have to be cautious and talk more about expectations than, than, uh, and approximations than certainties, as we tend to do in natural sciences. And, and we can live with that. Okay, so this is uh, my sweet and short uh, approximation uh, in terms of um, us defining what is social theory. Uh, look forward to engaging with you in, in terms of your reading of the first sign chapter. Look at, uh, look at uh, um, I learned to see what chapter is assigned, that is assigned for this week. And I look forward to seeing you this um, Friday at night. Night. See you later.